let's learn what are the fastest storage devices inside a microprocessor or inside a desktop computer what are they one hint these are available inside the cpu itself and these are very fast why because they can store or retrieve data within a clock cycle of the processor another hint is these are very limited in the numbers they are fixed in number not changeable fixed in size and also they have very small storage capacity but very high cost these are nothing but the registers registers are the fastest storage devices but they are very limited in the storage capacity what we are about to learn is about 8086 registers but before the starting 8086 registers for instance 8086 registers are divided in different categories general purpose registers segment registers pointers and index registers flags but let us simplify it we will learn all the concepts but in a very simple way how we will assume a basic computer what is basic computer we have uh, known manu machine morris m manu has imagined a basic computer which is also called as manu machine let's look into that what are the very essential registers for our basic machine what are those those are given in this table as you can see there are eight registers eight different registers there is one more thing it is about flags they are we will uh, uh, we will imagine the flags in a bit different way directly as flip flops instead of registers about these eight registers what are those things the first one as you can see in the table is data register which holds a memory operand whatever operation you want to do for that instruction if you need some operand that can be stored in data register the next register is address register we don't want to handle the operand directly we want to manipulate the address for instance you have a ad array and you want to manipulate the address then you need to store address and for that you can use ar register the next and most important processor register is accumulator why accumulator is being used to accumulate any things what are these things accumulator for example if you want to do some addition where what what is the input for this addition operation where the output should be stored all answer for all these questions is nothing but accumulator the input primary input for a particular operation will be available in accumulator after the operation the result will be stored in the accumulator itself now we need to do some operation right what is the operation how the logic circuit will be switched for that particular operation processor has lots of circuitry you need to turn it on turn it off buses should be turned on turned off how all those things can be managed these things are managed when you load the particular instruction into the instruction register instruction register will manage uh, instruction code operation code what you have uh, seen in the previous class operation code will be kept in instruction register from this register the circuitry will be switched off we are executing a instruction what we should execute in the next uh, instruction cycle that will be kept in the pc program counter in the program counter will always point to the next instruction that should be executed and if we have some intermediate value where we should store that the answer for this question is temporary register tr and for our operation we need to do lots of input and output we need to take some input values we need to give some output so these requires device operations we need to send data to the device 
if we are sending the data we need to keep that data somewhere right that somewhere is in like if you are sending some data that is that data will be kept in the output register and if you are receiving some data input for example from the keyboard you are going to get something that input buffer will be kept in the input register now if you observe in the second column in the second class second column you see there are number of bits first we will see what all the different uh, columns we are having in this table register symbol the short name for the register that is d r a r e c likewise number of bits how many bits these registers are having the storage capacity and the, la the next one register name what is that register why that register is being used that is function now as you can see the number of bits allocated for different registers are not same they are varying there are some 16 bit registers there are some 12 bit registers why it is so why th that is there is that difference the reason is very simple if you look at the memory the, the, you, you see the memory is of 4096 words size the memory size is fixed and it is the maximum memory is 4096 words 4096 how we can represent it that is nothing but 2 power 12 2 power 12 if you have these many 2 power 12 uh, different things how you can count you need to keep 12 bits for counting these numbers isn't it so if you want to locate 4096 different words in the memory that is you are going to generate or you are going to count from 0 to 4095 4095 till there if you want to count you have to have 2 power 12 combinations that is 12 bits are essential you need to have 12 bits for the memory address so where we are going to use the address we are going to use the address for two different things one is to locate the instruction another is to locate the data locating instruction who is doing that job process counter pc as you can see the pc size is 12 bits 0 to 11 that is 12 12 bits and also where is that operand how we are going to refer the operand using address register address register size is also 12 bits right you got the logic now now if you see the next line in this memory memory is of 4096 words and 16 bits per word one word is of size 16 bit 2 bytes hence all our general purpose registers if you want to store some day operand it will be of 16 bit and hence our uh, general purpose storage device uh, storage registers accumulator data register and uh, temporary register all these are of size 16 bit 16 bit or 2 bytes and the last one is about input and output it is assumed that in manual machine in the basic computer input and output will happen one byte at a time one byte at a time that is byte by byte if you are using keyboard one key at a time so now to store one byte how many bits we are going to see we are going to need that is just eight bits right that is why input and output registers are of size eight bits you got the logic right address registers 12 bits all general purpose registers are of 16 bits and also instruction register operand uh, sorry op code is stored in the instruction register that register will also have 16 bit width 0 to 15 and uh, all input and output operations will use one byte at a time and hence input and output registers are of size 8 bit that is one byte now getting back to these different registers we will look at these registers in detail so the what is the first thing the data register how this data register is going to be used 
and uh, there are some similar registers data register temporary register and accumulator how these things are going to be used let's imagine we have to do some computation for instance a is equal to c plus d and b is equal to b is equal to c minus d now to do this computation we have addition instruction but you can see the same operands are being reused instead of fetching these operands again and again from the memory what we can do is we can store we can put these operands in different registers for example i will assume res res result in it is in the accumulator as we know the final output will always be kept in the accumulator isn't it so hence uh, accumulator uh, stores e let's assume like that it's not a fixed thing just an example to understand the requirements of these registers and i will store c in data register where to store d now let's take one more register that is temporary reg registers this is just one way of using or utilizing different registers for faster computation our intention is faster computation and our limitation is fixed number of registers between these two limitations we need to manage whatever we can do hence we can we should use we should try to use maximum number of registers now i hope you have understood the significance of data register accumulator register and temporary register it is to hold some data and all the manipulation for example primary input or primary output that will be always be kept in accumulator ac so now uh, let's take how we can keep the data in accumulator for instance i want to add two numbers again uh, in this case first i need to get the c to where i can get the c i can directly get c to the accumulator so now what i should add i need to add d this can be kept in a register for example data register i can keep then this content will be added it is added to the accumulator now where is the result result is also kept in the accumulator itself this is the use of accumulator whatever is primary input that you can keep in the accumulator whatever is the output that will also be kept in the accumulator if you want to store that input or if you want to store that output then you can after getting the output in the accumulator then you can send it to some memory location if you want to locate some memory address which register you are going to use that is address register ar if you want to send some data to the memory where you should send that mess that uh, in instruction or that information is kept in the address register ar ar will hold location of a memory and uh, next uh, is instruction register uh, we we have un i hope we have understood the instruction register and the program counter program counter will point to the next instruction that should be executed whereas instruction register will hold the present instruction present inst instruction will be represented by the operation code op code hence instruction register will hold op code operation code it it could be of just uh, uh, it varies according to the instruction type the instruction type we are, we are going to see in the, uh, the coming classes now uh, the two registers which are left are input register and output register how they are being used let's take one example we have a keyboard 
we have a keyboard. From this keyboard, we are going to press one particular key. One particular key. Let's assume I, I am going to press A. A I am going to press. Suppose A is represented by the character code 65. 65 is the character code for A. Then the input register, if we have properly connected or given the instruction for taking the input, then keyboard is generating the value 65. It will be kept in its buffer. The buffer has 65. Now this will be signaled to the processor. What the processor needs to do now? Now the processor is going to receive the signal and the signal is kept to the signal is connected to input register that is INPR input register. Input register's value automatically will turn a 5. Why? Because we have pressed key A and A's character code is 65 and that value is generated by the keyboard and the keyboard's generated value will be given to the processor and the processor will store that in the input register. From the input register we can store back it to into the main memory or we can use it uh, in the different processings also. Similarly, we have this uh, 65 with us. We have a character code 65 which is meant A. We want to display it in the monitor, in our screen. Then how we can do? We just need to transfer this data to, to which register? Output register. So in the output register, if you transfer 65, how we can do that? We need to transfer the 65 to accumulator. From the accumulator, we can transfer it to the output register. If we do this, this if we have connected the proper output devices uh, using different output instructions, then our screen is going to display A. So I hope this will uh, clear how keyboard is uh, giving the input to the processor and how we are going to store that input in the input register and how we can give our data to a output device using out register. Thank you for watching. Happy learning. In the next class, we are visiting about the instructions.